Are you ready for the Word of God? Are you ready to be challenged by the Word of God? I want to ask you to please stand to your feet. This is our custom in Household of Christ to do a declaration. We make a declaration. We declare God's Word before we preach the Word of God. So you can just follow in the overhead with us. Are you ready? One, two, three. Three, I'm a son of God revealed. I'm blessed with every blessing in Christ Jesus. I'm saved. I'm healed. I'm delivered. I'm a life-giving spirit. I accept his sacrifice on the cross and his resurrection power in my life. I'm bound to his word and can do what it says I can do. I receive the word with meekness and I'm changed from glory to glory. I have the God kind of faith. I'm the righteousness of God and will never be the same. Jesus Christ is my Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. As you take your seat, turn to the person next to you, look them in the eyes and say to them, your smile looks better than the last time I saw you. Keep on smiling. I know you have a lot of things to be happy about. Amen. Family, listen to me. You might be going through some challenges. You might be going through the most difficult time in your life. But when you know your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, there's reason to rejoice. There's reason to be happy. Because there's a life year after. Amen? There's a life year after. So today I want to talk to you about something very, very important. Maybe you received a message, a notice about mind control. If you don't control what's going on in your mind, if you don't take control of that, it will start to control you. In this world, we... People are facing so much rejection, going on social media, that I get a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Fear of the future. Fears that people have. A battle going on in people's minds. Will people accept me? Will they reject me? Do they love me? Do they really care about me? Battling with so many things. Young people. Thoughts of self-hatred. Thoughts of anger. Thoughts of suicide. The thing that I've been praying against more than anything the last two weeks. Suicide spirit of suicide that's coming against people. People in a place where they just feel they've lost all hope. Don't have to raise your hand. You can just double blink at me. Especially this time of the year where you think things should have changed by now. I thought this would have happened by now and nothing has changed. Am I talking to the right people? You've worked so hard to see change and nothing has changed. It's taking longer than what you thought. There's a battle going on in your mind. Family, listen to me. Your mind is the watchman. You have to be very careful what you look at, what you listen to. Because it affects the way that you start to think. It affects what you start to meditate upon. Many people are facing challenges because you're having too many conversations in your head that's not led by the Holy Spirit. Many of us did it before we knew God. You'd look at a guy and you're smaller than him. You look, I'll beat you up. I'll beat you up so hard. I'm going to smack you down. I'm going to kick you. I'm gonna, and you start thinking all these things. Then you start saying it to your friends. You know what? That guy's looking funny at me. I'm going to And the next minute you go and do that. You first think it, then you say it, then you do it. What happens in your mind will happen in time. Turn to the person next to you and say, what happens in your mind will happen in time. You have say to yourself, nobody loves me. Nobody cares about me. If you start thinking that and you believe that lie, later on you'll start believing it 
and you'll start acting it. You'll pitch up at a place where everybody's expecting you and loving you, but you'll be in the corner sitting there. They all hate me. Nobody cares about me. Am I talking to the right people here this morning? Turn to the person next to you and say, sometimes I have a battle in my mind. <laughs> Proverbs 23 verse 7 says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So what you believe about yourself the most, that's who you become. Now many people out there that are beautiful, but in their hearts they don't believe they're beautiful. Because they never received the affirmation maybe of somebody, of a father or a mother, and they just believe they, they're not beautiful. Matthew teaches us and say, watch and pray. Because you can fall into temptation. He says, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He says, watch and pray. Especially as we enter into December holidays now. Be in an attitude of prayer at all times. Be alert. There are many temptations out there. And if your mind is not the watchman, if you're not alert, if you're not praying and watching, it's very easy that a lie can be dropped into your mind. You first think it, then when you think it long enough, you start to say it. And when you say it long enough, you'll start to do it because your words will ensnare you. I'll never talk to that person ever again. Now people hear you. They say, oh, no, no. I have to never talk to that person again. You can make certain decisions. Turn to the person next to you and say, your mind is the watchman. The Bible says if the watchman is asleep, it's very easy for the city to be attacked. If the watchman is not alert, your mind has to be alert. Job, in the book of Job 33 verse 1, makes a very interesting statement. The Amplified says, I dictated a covenant, an agreement to my eyes. How then can I look lustfully upon a girl? He said, I've made a covenant with my eyes. I'm not going to look lustfully at a girl. You know, I discovered a WhatsApp feed the other day. You know what that is? Okay, you're looking at me like it's something I should have found out years ago. But, I just... but sometimes I'm, I'm even surprised what people would post on a feed. And if you don't have a covenant with your eyes and you continue to look, you can get yourself into trouble. Turn to the person next to you and say, be careful what you look at. We're talking here to the church, amen? We want to live a life that is pleasing to God. So we have to be careful at what we look at, what we listen to, because it can affect our behavior. When people say, I just did it, that's nonsense. That's not in the Bible. Not one amen. Okay, just double blink at me. Turn with me. In your Bibles to the book of James. One Peter gives us a warning. It says, Be well balanced, temperate, sober of mind, be vigilant and cautious at all times. It says, Be vigilant and cautious at all times, for your enemy. Of yours, the lion is moving around seeking who he can destroy, who he can devour. Says, like a lion, he is moving around. He wants to roar at you, shout at you thoughts of fear, thoughts of intimidation, rejection. Negative thoughts. You're not going to make it. It's over. Shh. 
shouting and roaring it at you. Have you had a lion roar at you? You're a failure. You'll never make it. What do you do when the enemy roars at you? Your mind has to be watchful. Do you think Goliath, when David faced Goliath, do you think Goliath said, Oh, sweet David, I see you've come against me with a stone and a slingshot. I'm so offended. Shoo. I'm going to kill you today. I will feed your flesh. No, he didn't come like that. He came like an intimidating giant, shouting, saying, I'm bigger than you. I'm going to kill you. How dare you come against me? I'm going to slaughter you this day and feed your flesh to the birds of the air. That's the attitude of the enemy. Turn to the person next to you and say, I've got good news. We have victory. Say, those shouts should not intimidate you. Your mind is the watchman. Now turn with me in your Bible to the book of James 1 verse 13. Let no one say when he's tempted, I'm tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. Turn to the person next to you and say, God will never tempt you. And God cannot be tempted. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift, every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. James says this is how it works. The enemy plants a seed in your thought, a negative thought in your mind. Just one small little thing. You're not going to make it. You're not loved. Everybody hates you. There's no future for you. The devil tempts you with a thought. Turn to the person next to you say, everybody and anybody can be tempted. If the enemy plants a seed in your heart that is not in line with the word of God, do not accept it. Reject it. Because if you allow that seed to stay in your heart, it will start to grow. And when it grows, it becomes a desire. And that desire turns into sin, and sin produces death. I just suddenly did it. No, you didn't. You saw something that was wrong, and you started looking. You heard something that was wrong, and you started meditating upon it. You've been thinking those wrong thoughts for a while, and now you started doing the wrong things. Turn to the person next to you say there's hope. I had the great privilege to know a great prophet. He unfortunately has crossed over to be with the Lord. But he did many great things. He had, had faith really for the supernatural, and he was always positive. And one of the best conversations I ever had with him is when he told me one day, we were talking about thoughts, negative thoughts, you know, pastors also have negative thoughts. Some people think pastors don't have negative thoughts, but we also have negative thoughts. And one of the most liberating things for me was when he told me, I've also got negative thoughts. I said, no, no way. You, no way, impossible. And he said, yes, I also have negative thoughts, but I've trained my heart and my mind to replace it with the word of God immediately. So when the enemy tells me I'm going to go under, I say, no, the word of God says I'm going to go over. When the enemy comes and he plants a seed, he says, I'm the tail. I said, no, I'm the head. When he says, you're not going to make it, you have no future, I declare the word of God says, no, I know the thoughts God has got towards me, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give me a future and a hope. If the enemy says, you're going to be in darkness all your life, he says, no, the Lord said, he's the light of my salvation. He's the strength of my life. Give the Lord a hand. 
So I want you to be encouraged. We're in a battle, and there's a battle. But we've got victory in Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ has committed himself to our victory. And that victory is our faith. And that faith comes through the word of God. This word has got healing power. It's got deliverance power. It's got salvation power. It's got redemption power. Are you fighting the right battle? Or have you been fighting the wrong battle? The Bible says our battle is not against flesh and blood. Our battle is in the spirit. It's against principalities. It's against powers. It's against authorities. It's come against you. Spiritual battle. That's why you have to watch and pray and be alert. To train your heart whether you're going to listen and to the lies of the devil and act upon that or whether you're going to obey God's word. That's the challenge. You know the good news? Jesus' 12 handpicked chosen disciples. Would you have liked to be one of those highly favored 12 disciples? When you read the Bible in Matthew 24, those handpicked and then the closer group that went with him when he prayed before he had to be crucified, guess what? They fell asleep. Who of you, when you know you were supposed to pray or read your Bible, you have fallen asleep? Don't raise your hand. Just double blink at me. You know, when you're on TikTok, two hours can go. I'm not on TikTok. I've just heard people watch it for hours. Or Instagram. You go on Instagram. And you're awake like this. Whoa. But when it comes to your Bible, you want to read one chapter. Jesus said to his disciples, could you not watch with me for one hour? And I'm thinking, God, what are you saying to us? Hour. I mean, most people, if you have to say to them, pray for an hour, what would happen? Turn to the person next to you and say, watch and pray. Family, there is an instruction for us to be in an attitude of prayer. We are in a warfare. If you want the victory, warfare is necessary. But the right battle, the right battle. Are you ready to watch and pray? Watch and pray, watch and pray. Not start praying next year, now already. We don't walk by what we see. We walk by faith. Walk by faith. So you have to allow the Word of God to become the standard for your life. If you observe closely, you'll see when you've missed the mark is when you've allowed yourself to start thinking negatively, then you started talking negatively, and then you started doing negative things. The devil cannot make you do anything. He plants a thought in your mind, and then he wants you to meditate upon that. Many of you are meditating upon too many wrong things that's affecting your spiritual life. If you're not controlling your mind, your mind will control you. If all that you are watching here are wrong, it will start to affect your mind. And after a while, it will start to affect your speech because what you meditate upon gets established in your heart. And out of the good treasure of a man's heart, he brings forth either good or if there's bad things, he brings forth bad. So if there's good things in your heart, you'll start saying good things. But if there's bad things in your heart, you're meditating and looking only at negative things, you'll start to speak these negative things. Then you'll start doing negative things. Can I give you some good advice to close this year off? As you go on holiday now, Go and think 
about the things that you've been talking about. Because this heart will always snitch on you. Your heart will show you what's really going on by what you are talking about. When you're just with friends casually, what are the things coming out? Here in church, everybody wants to say the glass is half full. But it's when you're on your own with your friends and family, then we know if the glass is really half full or if it's half empty. Amen? Make a decision. Allow your mind to be the watchman. I want to show you two examples from the Word of God quickly. Go with me in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 4. The good news is God will always warn you. God will always warn you when there's negative thoughts. But it's there when we reject the word or accept the word of God. Look at this, Genesis 4, 17. God is speaking to Cain. He says, if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you. But you should rule over it. it says the things that you are thinking Cain it's wrong those things that you are thinking upon well very soon you'll start saying these things and then very soon you'll be doing it, it says don't think upon these things that are wrong do what is right you want to do the wrong thing because you're thinking the wrong thing stop thinking the wrong thing control your thoughts Control your thoughts before they control you. Replace it with the Word of God. You know why he had this conversation, why this battle was going on on the inside? Because he compared himself to his, his brother. And that thought that was planted in his heart grew to sin. Satan rules through sin. Turn to the person next to you and say, Satan rules through sin. He does nothing without sin. So if you know that, your actual enemy is sin. It's not the person sitting next to you. It's not your boss. It's not your spouse. It's not the person that's made you angry. Your actual enemy is sin. Jesus says, watch and pray. Be careful that that thought does not get planted because if it starts to grow, it will manifest. What happened in the end? What did he do? He killed his brother. Because that thought started to grow, and then it manifested. It, does that sound like James? The desire in your heart, I'm better than my brother? Do you know what's the thing that made him angry? Jesus said to him, why are you looking so angry? Why are you angry? Why has your countenance changed so much? If you go read the previous verses, the Bible says, in the process of time, Cain came and he gave to God. Maybe he brought wheelbarrows full of fruit. We don't know. Maybe he brought three or five wheelbarrows, but the Bible says in the process of time, he gave an offering to God. But Abel, his brother, took the first fruit and gave it to God. And God accepted Abel's offering because he put God first. But he did not accept Cain's offering because he did not put God first. It's not how much you give are you putting God first. Sometimes we can look at people and say, I'm doing much more than them. I'm sacrificing more than them. I'm better than them. God, why are you blessing them? Don't have to say amen, just double blink. Have you had thoughts like that? looking at family, looking at friends. God warned him and said, you better take control of your thoughts right now because the direction this is going, you're going to do something very stupid. Do you know what's the good news in this family? It teaches us the devil can only tempt you. He can tempt you with a wrong thought. Then he wants you to start to say wrong things and then you do wrong things. Can I tell you something? Anybody can be tempted. Jesus was tempted. It doesn't matter how close you are to God. Go read Matthew 4. 
Jesus, the Son of God, was tempted. Doesn't matter how close you are to God, you can still be tempted. But Jesus responded with the Word of God. Many today have come for prayer. We have a prayer line after the service where we're going to pray for every and anybody. But if you are coming to the prayer line because you're battling with certain kinds of thoughts, and you say, God, set me free. Are you leaving after the church service and you're going to look at the same stuff again? Because then it's better not to come to the prayer line. Because if you receive your healing and you're not prepared to maintain it, what happens if it becomes worse? That's scripture. You need God more after your healing, after your deliverance than before it. God heals us for the salvation of our souls. Can I have one amen? amen. This is the gospel. Go read John 5, 14. Jesus said to the man that was healed at the pool of Bethesda, he said, go and sin no more, lest the worst thing happens to you. What is he saying? He says, now that you have been healed, you'll need God even more. God does not heal you to become a better sinner. God didn't heal him now to go to places he should not go. God healed him so that he can serve him better. And it was good that God found him in the temple. If God gives you your breakthrough, your healing, your deliverance, where would you be the next week or the next day? Would you be back in church? Amen. Amen. In your mind, you're having those conversations already and God can see it. In verse 8, Genesis 4, verse 8, if you look there, Cain suggested to his brother, let's go into the field. Can I give you some good advice in this December? People that don't celebrate you but tolerate you, be careful of their suggestions of where they want to take you because there can be a lot of harm in that. Oh, just come with us, my brother. Now, if the person is not celebrating you, you'll see on their countenance. God said, what's going on with your countenance? Why are you so angry, Cain? Be careful of those suggestions. Amen? Wrong places can be harmful. Equally, if God has given you an instruction to do something, maybe God has told you, start a business, or do this, or do that. If God has told you to do it, be careful who you take with you on that journey. God spoke to Abraham and said, go to the land I will show you. Then he took Lot with him. Go read Genesis. Lot took the best of the promised land, and it's not part of the promised land anymore. Sometimes you take people with on the journey that you think, oh, let me just take them with to them, not on my own, or they can help me. And they've taken the best of the promised land away from you. Double blink if it's happened to you. You don't have to say amen. Am I talking to the right people here? Can you see how important it is to view everything in the light of God's word? Cain did not resist the temptation to do evil. And the desire grew and he killed his brother. If you don't manage what's going on in your mind, your mind will start to manage you. Some of you have been having some dangerous conversations with yourself. There's a battle against temptation to rule over good or to, to accept the good of God, but to rule over the evil. The devil can only tempt you, but you can resist that temptation. Amen? Your mind is the communication point where the enemy will drop thoughts, but God will also give you instruction in righteousness. The Word of God, every time you read the Word of God, Every time you read the Word of God, it's instruction in righteousness. Hebrews 4 verse 12 teaches us that the Word of God has got the ability to discern the innermost thoughts 
and desires in your heart. What does James say? He says, those thoughts, when they become desires, that's when you act in the wrong way. But the Word of God, when it cuts into your heart, it will show you these thoughts, these desires. These thoughts, one thing I've desired of the Lord, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. That's a good desire. Continue to meditate upon that. But those wrong desires, it always show that. Hmm, That's anger that you have. Cain against Abel. If you don't start ruling over it, it's going to take control of you and destroy your life. That's why you have to spend time in the Word of God. Do you want God to do double in your life next year? Restore double? Maybe you should cut down on whatever time you are doing here and double up on this time. Because this has light this says life. Amen? Say amen like you mean it. Yeah. Are you going to double up on this? Because if this takes control of your mind, wow. It saved David's life. It saves David, David's life. Let me close with this. Go quickly to the book of 1 Samuel 24 verse 9. Oh, I'm, I'm just going to quote it. You know the story. Let me give you two examples. Here is David. Saul is trying to kill him. He's hunting him. He's made it public that he wants to destroy him. Now he's in a cave. David is in the cave. Everything looks perfect from a natural point of view. David can kill Saul. A matter of fact, his friends, his companions next to him are whispering in his ears, this is God. Look what God has done. Kill him. Kill him and your king. I mean, nobody is going to know. David listens to his conscience. He says, no, I cannot kill the Lord's anointed. He cuts off a piece of the robe, but he does not yield. He does not bow the knee to the temptation to grow in his heart to kill Saul. He walks out and he says, Saul, what you're doing is wrong. You're hunting me. You want to kill me. But I've not done it. I had the opportunity, but I didn't do it. I ruled over the temptation. Another example in the New Testament, you can go, look, you know the story about Herod and how John the Baptist was beheaded. It was Herodian's daughter. He said to her, ask of me anything and I'll do it. And here she comes and she says, I want you to chop off the head of John the Baptist. Family, now let me just say to you this. If you've given your word to somebody and say, you can ask me anything, I'll do it for you. And they ask you something that's not in line with the word of God. You cannot agree to that. Amen. He should have not yielded to that. He said, yes, I'll keep my word, but I'm not going to kill somebody. I'm not going to do that. Amen. Sometimes when you've given your word and somebody asks you some, to do something which is contrary to the word of God, you cannot do that. You still have to listen to your conscience and not say, well, I gave my word, I have to do that. Amen? We have to yield to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will lead and guide us in everything. It's when you yield to the Holy Spirit that you start to have the mind of Christ. So I'm going to close with this. I've said a lot here. I know you, you're busy. You're ready to run home to go read your Bible. You're going to double up on your prayer time. Amen. Let me see your hand. <laughs> so I'm taking control of my mind, Lord. My mind is not taking control of me. As I, when I get home, two extra chapters, Lord. I'm going to read them now. Amen. <laughs> it's a battle. The Jesus' disciples fell asleep. Jesus said, watch and pray. Be careful that you don't fall into temptation. He said, the spirit wants to do the right thing, but your flesh is weak. So here's the Bible way. I'm going to close with this. Joshua 1, 8. We know now, if you see a wrong thought, that wrong thought, if you start to meditate upon it, it fills your heart, you'll start to say it. And if you start to say it, soon you'll be doing it. So Joshua 1, verse 8. This is the antidote. What does it say? It says, meditate upon the Word of God. So this, meditate upon the Word of God. If you're battling with fear, 
for example, go find a scripture. Timothy teaches us, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. Memorize the scripture and meditate upon it. Amen? If you have sickness in your body, get a scripture. He sent his word and he healed us. By Jesus' stripes, I'm healed. Whatever. Go find the scripture. Any word in the word of God is filled with life and light. Whatever God highlights to you. Maybe you want two or three. Go get it so you can meditate upon it. It says, number one, meditate upon the word of God. Do not let it depart from your mouth. Say it. Start to say it. I'm blessed with every blessing in Christ Jesus. This declaration that we do, it's a great way to start. All, every one of those lines in the declaration is just scripture. I'm a son of God revealed. That's Romans 8. I'm blessed with every blessing in Christ Jesus, Ephesians 1. Amen. I'm saved. I'm healed. I'm delivered. I'm a life-giving spirit, 1 Corinthians 15. Amen. Go and that's all it is. You're just declaring scripture, the word of God into your situation. And then he says, observe to do. So if you read something here, don't just read and say, oh, be kind to others. Oh yeah, that's for Jonathan. I must, I'm with this, John, this is scripture. No, make it your own. Observe, you go out and be kind. You go out and forgive. Amen? Don't read the word like it's speaking to somebody else. Read the word like God is talking to you. Then Romans 12 says, we'll start to renew our minds, to start to think like God. And when you meditate upon the word of God, out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth will, your mouth will speak. When that Jowan then shouts at you and say, I'm going to kill you, you'll be able to keep your solid front and say, oh no, you're in the realm of defeat and failure. I'm in the realm of victory in Christ Jesus. Let me give you the report. You've not come against me. You've come against my God. I'm the one that's going to kill you today. I'm the one that's going to feed your flesh to the birds of the air. The God that is on the inside of me is greater than anything in the world. And you use the word of God as your confession. Amen. Can you see the importance to protect your heart? Can you see the importance to protect your heart? Hallelujah. Please stand to your feet. We're just going to pray a few prayers. Amen. It's God's word that refreshes your mind to start to think in the right way. Have you ever been angry with somebody, offended with somebody, ever thought nothing is going to work out, everything is falling apart, and you just start reading a few scriptures, and you see, oh my word, I would have lost heart unless I'd believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He said, God, I'm going to see your goodness before I die. Yes, that's what the word of God says. Amen. So let me hear you pray. Say, act in me, Lord. Say, act in me, Lord that my thoughts will be holy. Pray it again. Say, act in me, Lord, that my thoughts will be holy. Say, act in me, Lord, that my words may be holy. Act in me, Lord, that my words may be holy. Act in me, Lord, that my deeds may be holy. Make my words as pure and holy as yours. In Jesus' mighty name. Pray it again. Say, make my words as pure and holy as yours. As pure and holy as yours. In Jesus' mighty name. Say, precious Holy Spirit, bind our hands that we may do no evil. Bind my hands that I may do no evil. Sanctify our hearts so that evil may not dwell within us. Lord, make us watchful. Make us faithful that we may not slip and sin, but be active in your service and joyful in your praise. Precious Father, grant unto us hearts that are humble, hearts that are sincere, hearts that are quick to forgive, hearts that will not be grudges, hearts that are quick to forgive, hearts that will not be grudges, 
Sanctify my heart with your blood. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want you to put your hands on your head right now. Say, precious Father, help me. Right now, I take every thought, every argument, every vain imagination, everything that exalts itself above Christ, I take it captive. And I bring it in line with the mind and the will of the Lord Jesus Christ. I declare I have the mind of Christ. Help me, Holy Spirit, to think upon things from above, things that are holy, things that are pure, things that are righteous, things that come from your throne room. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Sometimes when there's so many things going on and you've been replacing every negative thought with the Word of God and it's still a battle, these are our weapons. You take those thoughts captive and bring them in line with the mind and the will of the Lord Jesus Christ. Take some time, meditate upon those scriptures. Amen. I want everybody to put their right hand on their heart, raise your other hand to heaven, pray this prayer aloud after me. Say, Precious Father, my situation is beyond human means. I need the Savior of the world to save me. Save me, Lord Jesus. Wash me with your blood. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I confess with my mouth. I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ died for me, that he's alive right now, making intercession for all my weaknesses. Oh, Holy Spirit, help me to live a holy life, well-pleasing in your sight. I am now a child of the Most High God. In Jesus' mighty name. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand. If you've prayed that prayer in humility and sincerity of heart, your sins are forgiven. Your past is over. Don't mention your past ever again. Your past is Egypt. It's a place of bondage where Israel found themselves and God took them out of Egypt into the promised land. Amen. Think upon things of the promised land, the good things that God has planned for you. Amen. If you want to grow spiritually, if you want to make sure that you are strong, surround yourself with people that are watchful and prayerful. Connect to a team. Turn to the person next to you and say, connect to a team. What does that mean? It means get submitted and committed in a church. Amen. The second thing that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to discover the dream. Discover your gifts. Discover your talents that God has given you so that you can use it to advance the kingdom of God. And then lastly, use those gifts in the body of Christ. Serve in a dream team. So you connect to a team, discover the dream on the inside, and then serve in the dream team. It's not just discovering it, but using it to advance the kingdom of God. Amen. Has your faith been lifted? Are you going to take control of this mind? You are in control of this, amen? By what you meditate upon, by what you look at. Amen. Hallelujah.